Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I am going to do um, a couple coasters. These coaster molds I got from, where the hell did that come from? I haven't even started and I've already made a mess. Um, got from Mary's Glitter Magic on Etsy. So I had a request to do a simple beginner coaster video. Um, also in red. So I'm going to do that. Now this isn't going to be one of those flowery coasters. I'm just going to um, do the, you know, like a geode. So I have black. This is a pigment paste. Midnight. <coughs> Sorry. Midnight black from Lorez. And I'm going to put that on the outside. Just like a thin line, because it will all end up blending. Just trying to get it as close to the edge as I can and it'll work its way over there. Um, if you want, you can take your stick and help guide it. But as you fill it up, um, it usually works its way and fills in its little cracks. But sometimes this helps because um, like resin will go where resin's been, you know, it like follows its trail and then self levels. So sometimes this makes it a little bit easier. Just to make sure the color's all the way to the edge. So, like I said, this is the pigment paste. It's called Midnight Black. Uh, it's by Lorez. And I am using Sassy Red, also by Larez, also a paste. Um, then I'm using some holographic glitter. It's like a black holographic, kind of like a graphite type. Um, that is from Franz Glitter and More. It's called Halo 3.8. Uh, 
what else do I got? Um, some sun catcher powder from Larez. And I've got some Milky Way um, from Color Art, their Diamond Galaxy. And I think. that black dot right in the middle here. <laughs> uh, I think the Milky Way is what I'm going to put in the middle. Maybe not. Yeah. So... This is the sun catcher. It is super sparkly. So I want like a thinner line. So I'm going to squeeze the cup and go along the edge. <laughs> Come on. That was a little too much. Hopefully I'll have enough because I overdid that one. This stuff is so sparkly. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So, coasters don't have to be super complicated. You can uh, just like do simple uh, puddle pours and they turn out gorgeous. Just a little bit left here, so. Might as well not waste it. Um, so I like to put powders and pastes up next to each other um, because they interact pretty good together and they make pretty cool reactions same as if you're using like a, a alcohol ink or something if you use like different like alcohol inks and pastes and powders use like different things um, they interact because they're different uh, viscosities so All right, next I'm going to put a glitter line. Just along the edge.
seems like always when you start pouring, that's where you end up with a big glump. So then things aren't even. <laughs> See, I started here, so I got a lot more here. Which is fine, because if you're doing like a geode-type mold, nothing is perfect in a geode. You know, it's very organic, it's very, it's very flowy. very random so all right there's that I'm gonna wipe my hands off I'm gonna just pop the bubbles just a bit. So now this gorgeous red. This is my favorite red in the paste world. This is called Sassy Red. So I'm just gonna put this in the middle. And this is not sparkly or anything. It's a very matte, bold, true, true red. Okay. And now I'm gonna use clear to create a clear window and this will all push out. If you put clear in, it's going to push the color out, it's going to create an opening and then that is when I'm going to put my sparkly in it. So, push that red out. And then I'm going to drop some of this in there. We'll let it sit for a bit. I'm going to pour from higher up. Then it'll help push that red out. That red is pretty uh, thick. It's not going all the way to the bottom like it normally does.
Yeah, the clear is just kind of hanging on top. Of course, this. So this all has to do with the. You know, all of your different viscosities and stuff. Looks like it's sinking now. Okay, I'm going to warm it up just a bit. And then we're going to see what else we're going to add. This helps pop the bubbles. You don't want to use a torch on your mold. I'm going to push in the middle to help spread. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. And then they're all going to come back. So, let me find... I'm going to use if you're going to make any designs in your silicone molds um, you may use something that's not sharp so that it does not mess with your mold so make sure whatever it is it's dull um, I think I'm going to put a little bit of black in the middle. So, I mean, you can keep adding different colors or the same colors until, um, until your mold's full, but you want to be mindful of the way they're mixing. Like right now, I have no idea what the other side of this mold is going to look like. Normally the middle would be like glittery. Whoops. Uh, but because I didn't do it like that, I don't know. So it's going to be a surprise. So when you don't know what the back, if you're not designing it for, you know, the back, then you can design it in the front and then your front will look good. Um, your front will look good that way if your back don't you have um, you still have your front you know and that way it I mean as long as the front is designed the way you want then uh, if the back turns out good then that's a bonus but I always go to design the front. And it's just a bonus if the back looks pretty too. Because I have no control over that. So I'm just adding more colors here.
just to basically fill up these coasters. And this red is the best. If you're looking for a true, true, true red, this is it. Um, I'm going to put this in the middle and then I'm going to drizzle some clear just all around it, just a little bit, just to give it some depth. And then I'm gonna do some swirly swirls. But I wanted to get the coasters filled before swirling. There's a little fruit fly flying around, and I have a feeling he's going to dive bomb my coasters. Dive bomb my coasters. It's like they're not around until you get your paint out or your resin out. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna just drizzle some clear and it's going to add some, let me get these bubbles. are pretty much to the top so I'm just drizzling because it's just gonna open up just make some really cool designs it's always good to have clear resin clear resin is your friend when you are making resin art. Set that aside. Um, just going to swirl some stuff.
Pretty, pretty. I feel like it needs more red. So I add more red and then I'm going to slightly swirl it again. Because it doesn't have any red out here. So I wanted the red to mix with the glitter also. Not a whole lot because I don't want it to start getting muddy. Just a light swirl. All right, I'm gonna get the bubbles out. I think these are going to dry pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. So we will see you back in a few, well, it'll be tomorrow for the unmolding. But I think they're going to look really cool. So uh, I'll see you back then. Hi guys, it's Lisa. It's time for the unmolding. After I get these unmolded. I will bring you in for a close-up. They look pretty dark and mysterious. This is. Let's oh. Both sides have their coolness right let me just pop them out here this mold I've never had any problems with it sticking watch okay I knocked down wood but uh I love this mold I got it from an Etsy shop called uh, Mary's Glitter Magic. All right. 
me give you a little close up on the other side of the table. All right, so they're pretty cool looking. I actually think I like this side better because it's got more interest. It kind of looks like I don't know why I'm getting dragon fire or something from it. I don't know why I'm getting that vibe. But it's like galaxy-ish too. And then this one's like very glittery. So it's more looking like a geode. I <laughs> guess you could decide which one you wanted. But I'm going to go with this side because this side is really cool. And I will probably put like just a thin layer because the glitter did come to the top a little bit. So it's got a little bit of, well actually it just looks like it's got texture. I don't feel it. But yeah, a small thing is another one. I really like how these turned out. I'm sure these are pretty much the same. This one's got like I'm glad I swirled them at the end. I wasn't going to. So yeah, if you... So, that's them. And then I had extra resin, of course. I always have extra resin. So I ended up... Uh, I had some extra clear. So these are the... Um, from another piece, I used the runoff and I dipped some uh, pop sockets. So I just covered them in some clear resin. So these ones, that's some of the stuff you can do with. And if you have like extra resin that's colored, you can also just take your plain, you know, pop socket blank and just dip it right into the resin but because I used runoff from an acrylic pour I covered in resin so those are them these are just some little hearts I made from the red that I used but I'll just put them in my little embellishment box and then I can use these like in a coaster or something. If I redo another coaster like this, I could put that at the bottom like I did with the other coasters. So it's always good to have, you know, when you never waste your resin, never let it just sit there do something with it so I mean it's always good to have little molds around because you never know when you're gonna need these you know little things little cute things because see I end up I have a little box here and so like any extra resin like I just hold my little you know I just do the little molds so that if I ever need a pink cancer awareness or if I'm doing any sort of awareness and I need a ribbon just extra resin then I have a bunch of ribbons 
And then these are the, you know, all the little hearts. Extra resin. I mean, you're just going to let the resin go to waste, right? So use them. I just recently posted a canister video where I did a canister. And a bunch of people were asking me where I got the butterflies. I have a butterfly mold. And with my extra resin, I just make these little... I lost the butterfly somewhere. I just make them. And then... Then you have little butterflies if you need them. I mean, who don't want to add butterflies to things? Right? And then I have a little bow mold. Oops. So you have little bows. So yeah. So those are just little embellishments. Like these ones here with the red hearts. I just put them in with all my hearts. These ones are kind of chunky. Chunky little hearts. Whoops. So yeah. And then I make this mold. I use and add to... Hang on. The heart mold that I have. So I'll use one of these. I'm only down to one left here. I'm going to make some more. But you know, you can just add them onto other things. UV resin, put little crystals all over them. And they make really cute trays. So yeah, never, 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 never waste resin. Really expensive. So, anyway, all right. So, this is like my favorite heart mold, and it's might be on its last leg, but I'm gonna keep it's got a funny little lip on it. So, sometimes I have a hard time getting the first little bit up. But after I can get that up, see how it's like been overused. So this is the heart mold that I use for this little tray. So I had some extra black and red resin left over from these molds. So I didn't have enough to make a butterfly to match, but in the future I will. See how cool? So yeah, I'll just, or I can just take and glue a heart on it or something. There's so much you can do with extra resin. Never waste your resin. Super cool. I believe this is going straight into my bedroom. Because my bedroom is red and black and white. Very cool. All right, guys. So, thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks, guys. And thank you to the subscriber who wanted a... Um, a red coaster resin beginner video uh, I believe it is Navy Vet 2006 it's her YouTube name so uh, thank you and I will see you guys on the next one bye guys